a moment when you wish you would have brought your phone. Look what I found, you guys. I already have my phone. Look at all of it. He's got a bench, too. Oh. Me, uh, I'm going to have to put that in the back. Uh, let's put that in the back. This is a fun little place. Look, there's a place to camp. And it's kind of on top of this little mountain here. Little mountain. <laughs> this mountain. But it's really fun. And do you recognize what this is? Behind me? That's right, you guys. Huckleberry. Oh, look at here. This is fun. So in Idaho, we have a thing where everybody tries to leave places better than they found it. So you never know. Sometimes we found all kinds of things at camp spaces. Let's see if I can take you guys up this little trail real quick. We actually came out here in the mountains to try to find elderberry. And you know, even though we scouted out a place like over a month ago, uh, yeah, somebody was already harvesting where we wanted to pick. So kind of sucks, but you know, there's still plenty of time. <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys this real quick. Hold on just a sec. Let me get down here. It's pretty beautiful up here on top of the world. So at least we got a really good haul of uh, Uznia. We're gonna take that back. Actually, I may end up sharing that with friends because I've already gotten a significant amount. I wasn't looking for it, um, but pretty excited about that. And now we have yet another huckleberry spot. So you guys, if you have posted and you moved to Northwest somewhere and you're like, where do I find these things? My best advice to you is get out in the woods and go look, like just go look around, drive around. This is a place that is not that far away from our house. I've never been here before. So I'm pretty excited about that, but there's still so many places. So if somebody has harvested out of the spot you were hoping to harvest from, go find a different spot. Don't over harvest. That is the most important thing. So even though we're sort of disappointed today that we are not gonna be able to pick the berries where we thought we were going to, we did get some. I'll show you what we got. So that's what we got so far. Um, and here in a little bit, I do wanna show you guys how to know when your elderberries are ripe. All right, you guys, so here is the spot that we were hoping to pick at. So that's a tree, there are a whole bunch of trees over there. Um, it's just kind of crazy how many elderberries there are. I'm gonna get up closer here. So even though this is totally a loaded spot and there are so many awesome berries to pick here, um, this is not a good spot because someone else is harvesting from here. And when you pick too many things from one spot, that means the wildlife doesn't have a chance to come and have any for themselves. Um, if you get discouraged, like honestly, we were a little bit discouraged. This is close enough to our house that we were like, yes, we can have easy picking, but you know what? It is what it is. And I wouldn't be able to make this video today if this wouldn't have happened. So what I want you guys to do is if you're looking for a foraging place, um, look for signs that someone else is foraging. So I'm gonna flip the camera and I'm gonna show you some signs. Cut elderberries. Obviously this didn't just fall off a tree. It's been cut. Okay, here's some branches. You can see uh, the foliage right here. Like obviously someone's been walking through here. You can check, look at the base of a plant here. Look, here's some more. Um, you can see all around this elderberry and you can see cut tips. All right, so that's all your signs that somebody has already picked here, okay? It's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I wanted to show you guys how to tell if the elderberries are ripe. We're gonna have to get up here a little bit closer. These ones are kind of tall. If you're going elderberry picking, 
elderberries like to grow on really, really steep slopes. Um, so bring a pruner, like a long pulled telescoping pole pruner. That is going to be the best way. Okay, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I can't get close to this. And I'm going to show you what, what uh, how to tell what's ripe. Okay, so here's our elderberry here. You can see that one right in the middle of the screen there. Okay, that one is almost ripe, but not quite. But then you see the darker ones right there. And if you get up closer, they're actually a little bit green. That is not what you want. Those ones are not ready yet. Okay, that one right there in the middle, that one is ripe. Okay, so all these other ones that you see, these are not ripe. Now, it would be really tempting for me to come back to this spot in about a week and pick off all of the ones that are ripe. That's not a good idea because chances are the people who were already here once, they might want to come back and pick more. And since I know that other people are foraging here, it's just not a great idea. I have to get down the slope here. Woo! <laughs> okay, you guys. <clears throat> Let's go see if we can find another one that's closer. Okay, these elderberries are ripe. You can see that they have nice dark purple stems, almost a little bit reddish. These berries have a really beautiful white blush on them. Do you see that? And you can tell that the birds have started picking them off. Those are all good signs. See, so this is on the exact same tree. These ones are more ripe. Okay, you see that? Hey, while I'm out here, we just had a whole bunch of side-by-sides drive by us. I think there's another one coming. And you know what I really, really love is that a few years ago, side-by-sides, four-wheelers, and motorcycle, um, motor motorcyclists, they started this new thing where, hang on, there's more coming. Yeah, you know, that is one thing. It does make me really sad. You cannot go out in the woods anymore without seeing side-by-sides, four-wheelers, and motorcyclists. Wherever you go, you have to go way so far away in order to get away from it. There goes another one. Dang. But something that I really like is for the most part, all of the ones that we run across are pretty respectful. And so if, you look, if there's a line of them, you know, there's five of them or so, then you'll be driving our, we'll be driving down the dirt road and the first one will stick his hand out the window and do this. And then the second one will stick his hand out the window and do this. And then so on and so forth. And the last person does this. And that means there's zero more coming, which is so helpful on our tight, crazy country roads. Um, <clears throat> so if you are already doing that, I really appreciate it. Thank you. As soon as you get home from picking your elderberries, you're gonna want to pour a cup of tea, right? <laughs> you knew it was coming. And then you're gonna want to go ahead and get your elderberries ready and preserve them as fast as possible. That's just gonna pre preserve as many of the nutrients as possible in these guys. And um, honestly, you don't wanna let them sit and get juicy and gross and they will ferment. So you gotta watch out for that. So I'm gonna show you real quick what I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, I'll just show you what I'm doing. Mm. Tea first, right? Okay, so all I am doing is I'm removing as many of the leaves off of here as possible. Um, the leaves are just a pain in the neck to uh, have in there see like that okay so what all we're really trying to do is reduce the bulk of what's gonna go in the freezer so like this little guy all we're gonna do is just clip off these little clusters and that's it it's all right if you have one or two left on there I mean you can pull them off certainly if you want so clip the leaves off especially Okay, so after this, you're just going to pop this whole tray into the freezer. And I'm honestly going to leave them probably till tomorrow because it's kind of late in the afternoon. We might go pick more elderberries at a friend's house. And yeah, I'm just going to make sure they're really frozen. So even though this one doesn't really have any leaves on it, uh, if you just clip 
these little stems here, it just takes that big bulky one right off of there, all right? So you can, you can go through these now if you want to and just pull off the berries like this, but it's really hard and you can't have any of these stems in your final product. And so I find putting them in the freezer is a lot faster. Okay, so you see this one here, this little bundle was hiding and these are not quite ripe. They do have a little bit of a blush, but you can see they're not nearly as plump as even the ones that came off of the same cluster. And you just don't even wanna take a chance with green berries. Um, and so we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of these. Now, something you can do, oh, I found another little cluster in here. These ones are good. See, that shows you, that's the difference right there. So these are ripe. These ones right here are ripe. These are not quite ripe. So we're just gonna discard those. And something that's great to do with your extra elderberries is that the chicken, they go absolutely crazy over them. So any ones that we miss, it's not a huge big deal. The chickens will find them. final product of these elderberries and so I'm really not that worried at this moment about how clean they are I'm just mostly worried about the big bits like you can get these pine needles out of here but other than that you don't have to worry about anything so this is our harvest for today it's not super awesome but I'm just gonna be thankful that we got well, we've we've got some and this is a good start so um, some people also like to dehydrate their elderberries it does take a while uh, I like to dehydrate all of my herbs at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is pretty low, especially when you're talking about a juicy fruit. So um, that is not my preferred method, although if you're going to do that, you can do the same thing. Go ahead and dehydrate them on the stem and, um, and then remove the berries from the stems after you've dehydrated them. But I personally find the frozen ones are my favorite for flavor and also they are my favorite method and I find them the, the easiest method in order to get the berries off of these stems. So I hope you enjoyed foraging for elderberries with us today. Um, there should be lots more things that we're going to be foraging. And again, if you guys um, are interested in making elderberry syrup, I already made a video on elderberries quite a while ago. I will post the link up in the iCards for you. Also, if you're interested in the usnea and finding out which kind of usnea that you want to harvest, I will post the link for that video up as well. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Real quick before I forget, elderberries are not edible until you cook them or dry them. And then once you dry them, you're going to cook them anyway. <laughs> so please remember, do not snack on these, even though they're so beautiful and they look so appetizing. They are not for snacking on. Make sure that you cook them before eating. All of the leaves and the stems, especially the bark and the branches of the elderberry tree are toxic. So be sure not to eat those.